welcome, welcome yes. to another edition of Success Talk. Yeah. This, is, this is Dr. Herbert Harris. And, you know, each week we have just incredible talks with people who have accomplished great things, who faced great challenges, who overcome those challenges and made fantastic breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. And today we have my good friend, Hezekiah Davis. Hey, man, how you feeling? Entrepreneur. I tell you, man, you have so many titles. We need an extra page to put them yeah. all on. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm in good company because, hey, man, you're part of this journey, too, because this book changed my life. So let's we going we gonna to get right into it. All right. Well, <laughs> well Hezekiah, tell us a little about your background. You know, you have you've been through so many different evolutions. Uh, but, you know, a little about where you grew up, your early life, just a, a little recap. Okay. Uh, my motto is, my motto of life is I'm, for, I'm forever growing. Some hate it, some love it. Some artists don't nothing really change but the album cover. Mm. That, that is my, like, you got to keep growing. I learned that from my mom. Uh, my mom was uh, like a flower child. You know, um, she used to have, like, uh, flowers, on, you know, drawn on her cheeks, you know, as, as a kid. And um, she used to make her, she still makes her clothes. She still makes clothes and she's a crafts woman. She does t-shirts and all kinds of, she designs websites. My mom's like 76 now, mm -hmm. something like that. And um, that's how she is too. She, she grows and she just keeps evolving. And so from a young age, I learned that from my mom. Um, we I have five brothers and she was always having us making sure we were individuals. Mm. The, um, you don't do that. Your brother does that. that mm. That's what your brother does. That's what your brother says. You don't do that. You don't, you know, so we have, we, we always say we have a cowboy, a Rasta, a B-boy, uh, 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 a pimp. <laughs> In my family, there's like so many different dynamics as far as my brothers are concerned. And my sister, she's like the youngest out of all of us and she's mm. like she's uh she's all of us combined like, mm. this, like this maverick of a woman yeah. um so my upbringing was was um was very versatile um my grandfather is the band he had a band called the gospel disciples um my grandfather my um my uncle so i grew up watching them you know mm. rehearse in the basement so that was an influence, and then I have Muslims and and and, and Israelites and everything in my family, Baptists, and every kind of thing in my family, Rastas. Mm -hmm. So everything is like one big gumbo in my family. Wow. Yeah. North Carolina, South Carolina. Uh huh. Yeah. Philadelphia. Yeah, man. Well, it seems like you come from a very musical background. Yes, sir. So. How did that sort of shape you as a young person? Um, it, it shaped me as far as like um, music moves like life, mm. right? Music moves like life. Um, Bob Marley once said, uh, they asked Bob Marley, what is the difference, what is the difference between Calypso, um, Calypso and other Caribbean musics and Bob Marley was like, there's no difference. We just moved the chink a chink. Mm. So, so it's, it's, it's music is forever evolving, just like humans are forever evolving. Mm -hmm. um, the same as religion. One person moves the chink a chink and now it's not Baptist. Now it's Pentecostal or now it's not even a Pentecostal. Now it's, you know, it's well, just you know, one of the preachers once said, he said, the only difference between uh, soul music and gospel music is the way you rock. He says. He says. He says the gospel music you you rock up and down. Okay. And the soul music you rock side to side. So ah. this is the difference in the rock. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just move the chink and chink. Just yeah. different direction. Wow. It's all math. It's all mathematics and too. And then mm -hmm. that goes into the uh, to the um, to the shockers too. The way it moves you. And the yeah. way the rhythms move you and yeah. What, what notes you, are you hitting? Did you always want to be a musician? 
Yes. I knew, I remember one time my brother, my brother, my oldest brother, we were on the way to, uh, um, on a road trip. And I, and I was late getting into the car and I was in like the home studio. And I was sitting there and everybody was already packed up in the car. And I was still in the basement working on something. And um, I'm like at least like 13 years old, 13, 14 years old. And he was like at the top of the steps, like, come on, man, you act like you want to do this forever. And I turned around with a, with a straight face and said, I do. Mm -hmm. Wow. And he said that, he said from that day forth, he supported me. Wow. He said, that's when, that's when he supported me. So yeah, I known since I was like 13, 14, so that, I, that, that this is what I want to do, wanted to do for the rest of my life. Man. So yeah. when did you get your, your first break? When did you get your first break? Because I'm a fan of your music too, so. <laughs> well, well, you know, I tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll ask another question. When uh -huh. did you know? You, you know, <laughs> when, when I was, a, when I was a, involved heavily in the music business, yeah, man. I was a songwriter who couldn't sing my own songs. Mm -hmm. And I had a guy named um, Ray Jones. Ray Jones okay. used to be a... Uh, Della Reese's pianist, he traveled with a lot of performers. Mm -hmm. And I could get with Ray and I could say the words and, you know, somehow right. hum the song out or say it out. And he right. could capture it. And once he captured it and he would sing it, I'm like, that's it, that's it, that's right. it. You know? right. So even though I was making music, I didn't know mm -hmm. that I was that I had a right that I was good at it. I didn't know that right. I could really do it. When did you have your breakthrough where you knew this is it? I can do this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. Wow, okay. Okay, that's a, this is a crazy story. Mm -hmm. Huh, I never thought about this. I never thought about it. When did, when did I know that I could do it? Mm -hmm. Man, I know when I when I knew I couldn't do it. Mm. You know, and I knew I, I knew if if I wanted to do this, because then when I stepped outside of the house mm. and got my first time on stage, I was always a dancer. I was always a dancer. I was always uh, in the arts. I was a painter, you know, painter, everything. So one day I'm, I'm performing and uh, my first performance, my very first first performance, I'm rapping. My, my cousin was on the beat on the drum machine. And I, I get on the mic and I say a few words and my jaw locks up. Wow. And I couldn't, and I just started dancing like uh -huh. crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just, I danced for like at least two minutes. Uh -huh. And, um, and, and one of my local, my hometown heroes, Disco B from uh, Delaware, he said, um, he was like, yo, I mean, you should think about just dancing. <laughs> and, and after that, after that, I was so focused on getting better. Uh -huh. My brother, my brother, um, my my brother DJ Handyman. He's uh, he taught me how to he taught me how to rhyme and everything. But being in front of a crowd is another thing. That's MC and that means move the crowd. Uh -huh. and, and you know, I can I can rap rapping and moving the crowd is totally di two different things. Mm. You know, moving yeah. being an MC and rapping is two totally different things. And so I had to learn that craft of of first of all stage presence and then. Uh, and then commanding a crowd and and uh, um, commanding a crowd and then receiving energy and giving energy. Mm -hmm. So that was when when I when I transferred my dancing skills into the vocal skills and attached it to the physical. Mm -hmm. That's when I knew I had it. Performance was my first love you know, it, 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 and then studio. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you have like stage fright? Were you afraid in front of people? It, I was afraid to rap in front of people. Mm. When, I, when I first started, I wasn't afraid to dance. I, I used uh -huh. to think I was Michael Jackson. I could dance uh -huh. in front of people all day long. I was in uh -huh. plays and everything as a kid, but it, it was the, uh, it was the rap and it was being a vocalist. Yeah. That I was nervous about. Well, you know, Hezekiah, you, you really touched on something very powerful because, you know, you can attend an event and there's certain artists that never, ever connect with the audience. They just yep. do what they do. You know, they yep. rap or they sing or they play. You know, right. one of the things about when you go to see Miles Davis, you know, one, mm -hmm. of, one of 
was it and miles at the blue note you know right. a lot of the jazz clubs were really small you know when right. you go and you were thinking like man this this is it this is right even the cobra cabana in new york the first time i went to the cobra i'm like you know for this the is movies it. and everything it looked like a great big old place you know right and uh miles was known for coming out and he'd look at the audience disdainfully you know like what are you guys doing here and he right. a lot of times he turned his back and blow. He would turn his back. <laughs> you know? But was then, that out of nerve or was that out of just uh It was just Miles. Miles was just different. You yeah, know? Miles was I, different. It, yeah, he was just different. Cause he played, you know, he played with the Isley brothers one time. Mm. <laughs> you know, he he blew with anybody. But I think in as he began to evolve. I think inside he was very angry. You know, jazz musicians were mm. real musicians. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Most of those guys were sure. trained. They understood yeah. the music theory and all that. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a certain resentment. A rock musician, a guy could come out and he knew how to play in one key, knew yep. six chords, and he's yep. making a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I, think, I think Miles was kind of angry at that inside. You know, I, I got that sense. I never really had a conversation with him. The times I met him, you know, I got mm -hmm. a grunt, you know, like, yeah. And that was it, man. That was like, oh, wow. You know? Right, wow, well, yeah. He acknowledged I was alive. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But uh, I think maybe that was it. But he never, to me, he never really established rapport. But you know what, though? He made the audiences play his game. Sure. He always led. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be sitting there with his back to the audience, and people are still going, "Yeah, yep. yeah, 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 man." Yeah, you yeah. gotta follow. You gotta follow the leader, no matter what yeah. the leader's doing. Yeah. If he's doing something great, man, you gotta follow him. And then he he blow one note, and they're back. Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it was a, it was the notes he chose, man. Him, Monk, mm. Coltrane, um, Sun Ra, man, yeah. Sun Ra. Oh my yes. goodness gracious! Sunrise uh, is on a different planet. <laughs> Sunrise, uh, he's on a different planet, man. I'm, I'm working yeah. on right now a joint with uh, Noel Scott from Su Sunrise. It's uh -huh. from the Sunrise uh, um, Orchestra. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, joint with Noel Scott right now. Mr. Noel Scott, man. He's, did, he's incredible. Did you ever, you know, guy used to do stuff with Sunrise. He did, he was the jazz yodeler, Thomas. Um, mm. Mm-hmm. His name will come to me. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Leon Leon Thomas. That is right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, now Leon lived in the same building I lived in, up on Hall, up on 135th Street for a while. Yeah. Oh, and, and in New York? Yeah, yeah, 135th okay. between Lennox and 5th. Huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Mm. Okay. So now you, you started performing... You started producing because you said something that sing performing was your first love, and then you evolved into producing. How, how did you make that transition? All my friends would come over after school and just come in, and we would just play around in the studio. I just I would just record my friends. Mm -hmm. um, that eventually turned into uh, um, uh, my first mixtape. I paid for myself at a construction job called Exit Wound Status. It was, mm -hmm. I put I put a, a mixtape together with all my friends' demos, and that was like 1993, mm -hmm. some, something like that. And then um, I, I ended up, I knew the roots because my mom owned a balloon and flower shop, and my mom would uh, my mom would uh, decorate all these African uh, uh, exhibits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And 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 do all these uh, balloon shows and stuff like that. So I met Questlove and Black Thought and all. I met the Roots at mm -hmm. one of these African events. Our parents mm -hmm. knew each other somehow, and um, and so later on, after working with my friends in '93, I'm traveling back and forth seeing the Roots, and then I eventually moved there in like '96, mm -hmm. moved to Philly, and was working with them. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So yeah. So you and worked then, with Quest Love and the guys? Yep, sure did. Wow. Yeah, Beautiful. I worked work with them for a few years. I, I worked with um Music Soul Child. I worked he sleeps he stayed on my couch <laughs> for a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, um I worked with Music Soul Child, um Aries, a singing group called Aries, mm -hmm. um Bilal, um the whole, Jaguar Wright. Um Wow. 
Yeah, that whole now, crew. What did you What did you do with Questlove and and the Roots? I did drum program, and I was I was the guy that poured the poured the cables, the cords in the studio. Just you know, get this, get that. I was I was the errands dude. I would run the errands. And okay. Sh- yeah. Yep. Yeah. Make it so that everybody could play. <laughs> That's right. Make it so yeah. everybody can play. Yeah. And then, yeah. And I'll, yeah. I'll, then I'll play. I'll I'll play right along with them. I would um, I was at every jam session. I ended up hosting a jam session at Quest Love with drum at on twenty first uh-huh. and twenty first and South Street. Uh-huh. Um, he was he was the drummer for the jam session. Uh-huh. So and then I, I would do those shows and um, then um, a rapper named uh, Bahamadia. Uh, this female rapper na- uh-huh. named Bahamadia. She's um she's like my mentor. She mm. was always my mentor. She taught me how to deliver properly and and man, yeah, I landed in Philly at the right time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with the well, right people. Well, you know, I think we don't have many people listening to this to this broadcast, mm-hmm. but I think one of the key points is that you need to be good at whatever you're doing. Yes. <laughs> okay. yeah, and and so even though a person like I say even though Miles blew one note if he mm-hmm. could if he needed to he could go down and play all the parts if he wanted to that's right yeah and so the idea of excellence that personal excellence I think uh, I think you're an excellent example of it and you know Thank you. that always guided you because evidently you were always good at what you do yeah man and and, and, and light attracts light yeah, yeah. You're always around it, man. You're always around it. It all it always follows you. It always finds you. Yeah. It, it today I took a meeting. I took a meeting today at the art museum uh-huh. for um for this project that I'm working on called Colors. Uh-huh. And um and I was and I was talking to my, my, my friend who's a who's the painter. And while I'm walking around this art museum, I run into an old friend. And he's just so happened to be in another room uh-huh. in the art museum. And I was like, what are you doing here? And this is somebody I know from my childhood. Uh-huh. He's like, oh, oh, we, we, I'm with this grant committee. We just, uh-huh. we just have our meetings here. We're here like once a month. And mm. he just so happened to be there right there. So we, yeah. I just mentioned getting funding. Yes. Just, <laughs> so it's like light attracts light all the yeah. time. It just, yeah. And it's, a, it's like, we'll take one step towards God. You take two steps towards you. Yeah. And I, I, I went to the meeting. Mm. I took a step. I yeah. showed up. And then... Well, you know, you really... That's a real, you might say, a, a very profound truth. That if you do your part, mm-hmm. you create the vision of what you want to be, what you want to do, what you want to have. Don't mm. worry about the how. You know, like, <laughs> there's no way in the world you could write in your, your plan for the day or yesterday right. to say, I'm going to meet my childhood buddy in the museum who's going to be no way. Grant Riley. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. yeah. You see, so you really, I think it's important you do your part. Right. You, you know, there was a, there was a great, um, I think it's Footprints, you know, that poem, and it talks about the guy saying, he says, you know, you know, God, you and I were walking on the beach, and I saw my footprints, and then I saw your, your footprints, and then you know when I had my 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 toughest times, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I only saw one foot, one set of footprints, and you know, like God, why why did you forsake me? Mm. And God basically says, "Forsake you? I was carrying you." <laughs> right, 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 the whole time. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's a very rough paraphrase, but. The idea is you do your part. You do That's your right. part. Yeah. It's show up and it's your job to recognize it and be patient. It's mm-hmm. like you say, it, um, you run circles around them if you stand still. Mm-hmm. But then, but then again, uh, faith is faith is a verb, not a noun. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, it's, it takes action. Yes. Yeah, man. Now, I love you. Have connected with the book. <laughs> How did the book first come to your attention? Let me tell you about this book, man. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yo. Okay, at this time, it's, t- it's 2015, mm-hmm. right? 2015, I, uh, no, it's 2016, because I just, mm-hmm. two, well, 2015, I was stressing out. My, my, I had a band, I got a band called Johnny Popcorn. Mm. I, sing, I sing in a band. Uh, I'm the creator of an event called Beat Society. 
we um we were the, we're accredited as, as the first people to put producers on stage as mm. a showcase. Um, you know, Kanye West, Ninth Wonder, Knots, all Ill Mind, all of them used to roll mm. with us. Wow. And all these Grammy Award winning producers that produce everybody now. Um so I was I was I was revamping that because I, I got the rights to that back to that brand. Mm. So 2015, I was revamping that. I was working with my band Johnny Popcorn. I was running the studio. I was I was working out with the children in the park. I've been doing since 2013 to every week, two days a week. I work out. I do free workouts in the park with kids. Uh, I was wearing myself thin on all angles. And um, 2016, I had a brain aneurysm. A brain right? aneurysm. A brain aneurysm. She shut me down. I got back up on my feet. I got, uh, you know, it took a while for me to get on my feet, man. Um, um, then I found myself, as I was getting healthier, healthier, sliding into the same situation. Mm. And I started, I started, and but then um, I was doing studio sessions. I could only, I, I, I used to work 15 hours a day. Mm. I, was, I, could, I could only work three hours a day now because of the, the headaches so when i after i got home after like a year i went back to the studio could only do three hours a day started working my way back up oh there was a client who left your book in my studio she said she had just got gifted the book right mm. and it was she left it on my she had it on my on my desk and she was just thumbing through it through our session mm. Right. So I was too busy to even pay attention to what she was reading. She leaves it in my studio. Right. She catches a flight. She's rushing out. She's almost late. I have to mix the song by myself. Right. Without her. So I said I was going to send it to her. So while I'm mixing the song and she left, I'm looking at the book. I'm like, this is crazy. So I took a break and I th started thumbing through the book. By the time I got to my home, which is only two blocks away, but she called me, was like, yo, can you please mail that book to me? I didn't get a chance to really sink into it. And by then I was already in love with the book. And I said, <laughs> I, 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 said I said, look, now, I said, I'm going to order you a copy off of Amazon. I'm going to keep this one. Is that okay? She said, yes. So as, since then, man, that book. So I was ready to slip back into the same habits that gave mm. me my brain aneurysm. Mm. Letting certain characters in. The you know, opening pages helped me identify the characters. Mm. Just the beginning of the book helped me identify the characters. So then I started seeing everything around me clearly. Clearly, I started avoiding all these situations, every situation, slowing down. Mm -hmm. It caused me to slow down and put it all together. It really, that book, man, your book changed my life, man. Wow, wow. Was there any particular part that really stood out for you at the at the beginning, especially? Um, time, that 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 tough part about time, mm -hmm. and then at the beginning, um, dang, I forget what it's called. When you're dealing with um, people who talk about people and what that means, and mm, yeah, that that yeah. part, yeah. I started hearing. I started hearing people. I started hearing my clients. Yeah. In the studio, I started hearing people in business meetings. I started hearing, oh my, I, I was, it was the super conscious, the, the subconscious. The subconscious, the conscious, the, yeah. the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the super conscious mind. Yes, yes. Yeah. That helped me really identify the people I wanted to be around and wanted to limit being around. Well, you know something? So many young people. Your relationships, the people you put around you. I, I just, mm -hmm. you know, Hezekiah, I just did a talk this morning and with a group of ladies from the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. and, the, and I was sharing the fact that, you know, when you want to be in a relationship, I say, man, how are you looking for a person that you want to have in your life? And I'm thinking, I would love to have a person who, when they see me, they get excited. <laughs> You know, right. that they when when they when they talk to me, they're like, I'm happy for you. With that when I share my dreams with them, they're like, How can I help? You know? Right. Yeah. And 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 a person who's just super excited about my dream. Okay. Mm -hmm. And not being selfish because it goes both ways, but when you have somebody is who's excited about your dream, it gives you a yes. whole nother elevation. 
Yeah. Yeah. And so it, it's so important the people you have around you. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about that? You know, like taking some of the information from the book about the importance of who you permit to come into your space. What, what did I learn from it? Mm -hmm. what, did I, what did I learn from it? Uh, um... well, well, let me rephrase it. Okay. You know, you deal with so many people in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do you learn how to deal with them? How do you learn how to see who's for real, who's authentic, who's trying to rip you off, that kind of thing? The language. Mm. It's, it's, it's all in the language, especially being a writer, being a rapper now, and then you giving me certain keys. My goodness, I wish I, I, wish I, had, a, wish I had a book. Because I'm at my brother's house. Mm -hmm. um, oh, anyway. um, how do I identify it? By listening to, just listening. Mm. I, I, I could hear them. I could, and I could, now I could feel them. I could, I could, mm -hmm. I, and, but the thing is, I would hear it before and I would, and I would let them back in. Mm. And I would, I would let, I would let them, that's like, I love the abuse. Mm. I, and, I, and I kept getting, I kept coming back for more abuse. Um, thinking people would change and giving people the benefit of the doubt. And you, and you forget that everyone doesn't have your heart. Mm. And, and then every, then I remember one time, okay, here's, here's this obvious one. After my aneurysm, a client came to the studio. Well, wanted to come to the studio. I had just finished my three hours. I was already worn out. Um, he wanted to come by and play me some some of his tracks. I, I, I songwrite to people's tracks. He wanted to come by and play tracks. I said, hey, man, we, you got to do it another day. I'm worn out for the day. I'm done. Mm -hmm. He said, all right, well, you mind if I stop by? I was like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm cleaning up the studio, and I'm about to leave. Mm -hmm. He comes. Of course, he wants me to, wants me to play his music. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm so natural that once it starts, it can't stop. Mm. I end up spending three more hours in the studio. I wrote six songs. I have a headache. I told this guy I, I had a headache. I said, oh, my God, I wish I would have done that. Now I have a headache. I think my mm. vertigo is acting up. He said, he smiled and said, well, at least I got some songs out of it. Wow. Yeah. That That's lets the type you, that lets you know who they really are. Yep. Wow. I never, I never emailed him the songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I never emailed him the songs. Yeah, he, he, he may not. I don't think he, he deserved them. You know. Nope. Not mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at your life, you know, in well, in the music industry, you've done so much. What has been your biggest challenge in the music industry, and and, and how have you, or how are you, overcoming it now? Hmm. The biggest challenge with me in the music industry is, is avoiding vultures. Mm. Wow. I get I get along with the artists. I get along with the artists. Cool. It's the uh, the the suits and the money people. They uh, man, they they did a number on me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Publishing, publishing, fighting for my publishing back, fighting for um, um, ownership of my albums. Um, whatever man I, that that was the biggest uh challenge for me mm. um because i was I, I i you know it's music business i could do music i i was very well at, you know well versed in music but the business part mm. not not at all yeah um learned learned that as i go, went along now i'm 50 years old um business courses um taking taking business courses um Nonprofit courses, ready to start a nonprofit. So more education, mm -hmm. um, more education in my field, and that's how I'm moving forward. Mm -hmm. Now you know when you have a, like you say, a brain aneurysm. Getting past that was that one of your greatest challenges and one of your greatest victories. That was one of the greatest victories. That was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me. Mm. It it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I um, without the brain aneurysm, I would have kept doing the same thing, mm. and I probably would have would have would it been, it would have been worse. Yeah, you know, it's a point of no return where you know I could have not been here. Yeah, and um, um, I was getting very short tempered and irritated, 
at that point. Um, I guess that's 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 your chemical reaction, your brain ready to just snap. Mm-hmm. Um, I was impatient. Mm-hmm. I was um, doing a lot for free. Mm. I was okay. just giving it, giving it away, giving it away, giving it away, and just having faith in people. Um, the aneurysm helped me slow down and see all that, and and more importantly, it helped me see myself. Mm. Okay. It helped me see myself. It it, it 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 helped me recognize that a lot of it was my fault. Either I allowed it to happen, or I invited it. I had to signs fool me, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, uh-huh. shame on me. But uh-huh. five or six times, good grief, man! It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and then I realized also, um, like I, I told you before, I'm a, a, a lotus, lotus sutra Buddhist, mm-hmm. and so it's, we go through this thing called Dhaka, uh, where um, where when you sit with yourself for the first time. You meditate for a long time. You you start going into your your past. You either go backwards or forward. Past is depression. Forward is anxiety. So you try to stay in the Tao, the now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you start, you start going backwards, forward, backwards, forward. And you just mm-hmm. start seeing a lot. When I had the aneurysm, that was the first time I really sat down in my whole life. Mm. Ooh, the, the the depression was a beautiful thing now that I'm, you know, now that I'm over it, not, not over it, but you know, through it. Mm-hmm. And, and the lessons I learned, you can either take in hip hop, we say we take L's, but mm-hmm. there's two L's. You, t- you take a lesson or a loss. Mm. You can see when you take an L, you can take a lesson or a loss. So it's the faster you, I found the faster that you learn the lesson, the faster the blessings. Mm. The faster you learn the lesson, the faster the blessing. And mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a little pearl right there. Yeah, uh-huh. man. Yeah. yeah, that's what I learned from that aneurysm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. You, yeah, know, you can be paralyzed. Yeah, yeah, because many people, man, they have challenges and they don't know how to respond to it. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when sometimes you have to slow down to speed up. <laughs> you yep. know? And yeah. that goes that goes to time. That that yeah. that that, yeah. that time that time you got you said you can either invest time or or you can either invest time or, or spend time. That's it. And and I started really seeing how I was spending my time and like who I was spending it with. It, it's, it's 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 when you're in your purpose, you're investing. Yeah. And and I started recognizing your book helped me realize my purpose. Mm. You know, yeah. that's another thing that gave me like a, like a, a sharp beacon, and I totally changed trajectory slightly. Mm. Mm. Not even, not even changed trajectory. It helped me, it helped me slow down and put everything together, like Beat Society, Johnny Popcorn, Hezekiah, mm-hmm. and just merge it as one. Mm. And so, and that's the project I, I have coming in two, in twenty twenty three, called Color, called Colors, Colors. Yep. Well, of of all the music you've done, what what is your what creation are you most proud of? Um, I predict the riot. Uh, no, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me get for real. Uh-huh. Purpose wise, it's the forgiveness song. The forgiveness song. Yeah, because my uh-huh. grandmother, we 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 shot that video. We shot a video for a song called Forgiveness at my grandmother's house. And this is right before the pandemic. Um, we gathered at my grandmother's house. My grandma, she she loved the song. She ended up let me let me shoot it at her house. My aunt Jackie was in the video. She was she just got out of the hospital. Um, my my cousin Jamar, I, I, which I grew up with, you know, playing you know just making music in the basement. Mm. And uh, my grandmother passes a year later, and my aunt Jackie passes right after that. Wow! So we captured that moment. So my whole family loves that vi- that video, and that was like that's that's really the one that I'm proud about beyond just me. Yeah, the forgiveness yeah. song. Well, yeah. What stimulated you to write that? Uh, you have, you have a chapter called forgiveness. Yes. 
forgive. Yeah, that, uh-huh. that's, I read that. I, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you. Okay, check this out. <laughs> uh-huh. the, the first verse is, "I forgive you. I forgive you, brother. I forgive you, father. You know, I forgive you from all them little things. I pray for you." So I wrote that verse after the aneurysm. I'm I'm reading your book, right? I'm uh-huh. I'm, I'm I'm reading your book. The verse, the the the, the chapter about forgiveness. Yeah. Right. Comes up. That week, that same week, my father drives me to the train station. I'm going back to Philly on a train. Mm-hmm. He's, he says, Let's, I got to stop by my, um, he said, you he has to stop by the graveyard to talk to his mom. Mm-hmm. Right. I know his childhood was not the best with his mom. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, this is the first time he ever opened up to me mm-hmm. about his childhood. Yeah. And we had, and me and, my, me and my pops had a rough childhood. Like we always clashed, uh-huh. right? And and me, him telling me that story wow. gave me a whole different perspective on my father. And I forgave him that day. And, and your, your chapter of forgiveness helped me forgive my father. Wow. And then yeah. that's what sparked the song. Man. So thank you <laughs> once again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that, that, Thank you. That I, I appreciate that, man. But it's such an interesting thing, you know, that whole forgiveness piece, how it frees you, mm-hmm. it frees them, and how mm-hmm. it's so necessary, you know, because sometimes, you know, when lack of forgiveness is like an anchor, man, you know, mm-hmm. you have the biggest ocean liner and it drop anchor, you can have the engine running all day and it ain't going nowhere, going around in circles yeah. because that anchor of lack of forgiveness. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's a te- it's a it's a forever test too. Yeah, I mean you're, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna reach that challenge over and or you know like it's 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 really something, especially when you're inside of it. Yeah, yeah. And when and when you know like um, Malcolm X said about the Malcolm X said about the uh, taking a knife out my back. <laughs> like, uh-huh. yeah, it's hard yeah. to forgive somebody with a knife in your back. <laughs> so we yeah. in the midst of it. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well. You know, I tell you, Hezekiah, when you go forward now, Mm -hmm. let me ask you this question. If you look at where you are right now, you say you're 51 years old? 50, yep. 50 years old. Yes, sir. If you look back at your younger self, Mm -hmm. what advice (laughs) would you give your younger self? Oh, my goodness, man. Don't sign any papers. Mm. Don't sign any papers. Get a second opinion. Okay. Trust your gut, your first instinct. Oh yes. Trust your first instinct. That's your that's your God beacon. Yes. Yeah, that's 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 your God beacon. For trust mm. your first instinct. Um plan as far as like writing it down. Yeah. As far as writing it down and um I never really procrastinated. Uh-huh. I never really procrastinated and um, learn to love better. Learn to love better. Learn to love better. Mm. Um, Sometimes, sometimes it's you. Yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of what usually the same, every relationship is the same as what I learned. So this, I learned the same issues I would have in my personal relationships. I would have in my business relationships. Mm, Cause it's okay. it's all relating. It's all relating, yeah. Yeah. and 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 I, and and um, I, I I would tell myself be softer, mm. be softer. Um, it's because it's all about relating, relating. So now I look at like N- Nipsey Hussle said, um, you know about the marathon. Life is a marathon. Mm-hmm. But you, but then I say life is not just a marathon. Life is a relay race. Mm. Because okay. it's how you relay, it's how you relate to one another. Mm. And you pass that baton, or you pass that baton too hard, or you pass that baton too fast, or mm. you're going to So it's how you, you know, so it's be, be more gentle. Wow. Yeah, so that's that's, that's what I would some, tell myself. That's some profound stuff, brother. I, I was picking that trust, that first instinct. And that that right there is a, is a diamond. Mm. Because... That superconscious mind is always talking to you through your subconscious mind. Mm-hmm. 
you know, sometimes we call it intuition. You know, many times when we don't even have a word for it. You know, like I just, I just feel something. I just, you know, but you learn to trust that. Woo, yeah. yeah. Can I say? Can I? Can I say a rap? A rap to you? Go right ahead. That, that was inspired by your book. Mm -hmm. Okay, this was inspired by your book. It hasn't come out yet. It's called "I'm Forever Growing." Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. It goes. Um, when I say I believe in the God in you. I see what you're destined to be. If you don't believe in the God in you, well, this is what happened to me. I didn't realize I was a peer until people that I admired said that I was a peer. Alienate yourself. You'll become an alien. And that's when human beings start looking at you weird. You know what I mean? Running rings around Saturn, rain and out of the matrix with my spaceship. So now it's back to the basics, the basement. I've been levitating in time. The inner mind's eye defying gravity. The rules don't exist here. Namaste. No, I'm a stay. If I'm going to be like water, water, what would I ride away? My Messiah is blocking my way. I'm going to say my Messiah will mock aside. Hey, if they like what you say, they call it intuition. If they don't like what you say, they call it superstition. Because now I said sleep is the cousin of death. And I said sleep is the fountain of youth. And you said ain't no absolutes. It goes oops upside your head. <laughs> it's like a jungle. How I keep them going under. Been connected to the vibes. I've been since I was a youngin'. True and living, living in the heaven now. Put your phone down really when you living in the Dow. Dominoes, dominoes. You better go do it now. Prodigals, the sun and never go out because in the insane asylum is where they keep all the shamans the devil's a lie so when they tell you put that cuckoo back in the clock i said let that motherfucker fly Woo! i'm forever growing some hate it some love it mm. uh, and some artists mm -hmm. don't nothing really change but the album cover i'm forever growing some hate it some love it mm -hmm. uh, and some artists oh don't nothing really change mm. Mm. Yeah, man. Whoa, <laughs> man. Hey. <laughs> That's your book. That's your book, man. That's so beautiful, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> that is your book, man. You put the words together so beautifully. You know, I you know that there's such a rhythm in the words. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh it's funny, man. We used to do when we did our seminars. I actually had live music in my weekend seminar. Oh, and yeah. you remember Eddie Kendricks? Yes, yes. Eddie had a cousin named Edgar Kendrick. Hmm. And Edgar had a big hit. His head, a gospel hit, uh, what's that, Rough Side of the Mountain? Rough Side of the Mountain, okay. Yeah. And Edgar actually wrote the alphabet song on Sesame Street. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Oh yeah, and he eventually got it right and got some of got got paid. But we all Sesame Street actually came out of a program that we were all involved with. We were young entertainers at the Apollo Theater. They had a a program <laughs> called Calling All Children. Yeah, and yeah. They, and they, I came in as a guitar player, and uh, Edgar. I met Edgar Kendrick there. Edgar was sure. a, a writer, and then we got together. We wrote a song. Uh, what was that thing? As a matter of fact, it's one of those songs that's recorded by Philly Groove. It's on Amazon right now. And huh. it was, uh, no, that was, it was called, um, mm. oh man, what was, uh, I'm Tired of Being a Shoe Shine Boy. Uh, oh man. Mm. Right. But, but that era, uh, Andre Saunders was there. And the, uh, the, the lady, um, what was her name? The, the the Susan on El, on Sesame Street the sister uh -huh. yeah, yeah 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 her husband was Peter Long he was the stage manager at the Apollo and so Sesame Street was a street in the play called Calling All My, All Children oh that's where he got Sesame Street that, from that's where it came out of that Apollo uh, Theater and oh, at, that, wow. at some point they they owned the, some of the copyrights. Really? Yeah. So did, did anybody ever tell the story of uh, Sesame Street? Not most people don't know it. <laughs> oh, they, they weren't they, there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Susan, we were friends for years, man, Peter Long. But that, but out of that came some great guy, Andre Saunders, Andre uh, song, uh, uh, oh, man, Su suppression, depression, no chance for expression. You put me down, denied till I cried. But I never tried to let you misunderstand me. 
Because right. something inside let me know that I could fly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right yeah, that in. record is on that. That's among that. Um, if you go on that um, on Amazon right now, the group, The Finishing Touch. Okay. That was one of the songs we recorded. You know. So what do I look up? The Finishing Touch? Finishing Touch. on. Uh, it's called Philly Regrooved. Philly Regrooved. Really regrooved. Yeah. I, I, I want to move because I got the headset yeah. in and there. Yeah, and the yeah. Philly, Philly regrooved. And okay. uh, the, a lot of those uh, records that were done on Philly Groove, somebody bought the masters, I think, in England and re released mm -hmm. them all. So, Sunshine and Promises, that's one of my songs. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, No Second Thoughts, No Second Thoughts no second about thoughts. the one you really nice. love. Yeah. Andre right. Saunders and I, we did a, we were good buddies, man. We wrote and we used to run up and down the Broadway. I just wanted to, when you were talking earlier, I wrote down a guy's name, uh -huh. Eddie, Eddie Jones. And he hey, was who's like, Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones was in Broadway, you know, on Broadway in those days, they had a place called Harlequin Studios. Mm -hmm. And everybody went there to rehearse. It was rooms with the pianos. And Eddie Jones mm -hmm. was the guy that rehearsed all the groups. He wrote some of the songs. But the, mm. any group coming out of New York, Eddie Jones worked with him. You know? Oh, snap. Yeah. And so he would write and they would sing Eddie Jones, George. Uh, oh, man. But it was an era when you ran into somebody's uh, studio or ran them in the street. We, uh, you meet the guys. We put together a song, Life is Like a Self-Service Market. You can help right. yourself. <laughs> right. Healing ain't the song I sing when I say help yourself. <laughs> right. And that's that's the thing, too. Um, people always say that, that you know, I, I miss when when we sang more about love. But I'm, I'm, when I listen to old records, I don't, it, it, I hear love songs, but I hear song, I hear more, not just social songs, but just songs with more, more concepts, more yeah. conceptual songs. Yeah. Like, And people miss that part, too. Um, so how... That 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 era was so free that y'all came up in. Yeah. Like like uh yeah, that's now, yeah. Now think about this now. What you said, mm -hmm. your first mind. Because mm -hmm. so many of those guys ended up broken, dead and broke. Wow. You know, I mean you got guys like Jackie Wilson. You ever mm -hmm. you ever hear Jackie Wilson? Yeah, name? yeah, yeah. Yes, I love Jackie Wilson. Dead. In, in some, uh, what do you call it, uh, home in uh, what, New Jersey, you know? Mm, yeah. Now, now, here's a man that went all around the world. Sure. And so I think a lot of the feeling in the music came from that that internal pain. It's like mm. it's like when you're sick and you don't know what it is. Yes. <laughs> you know, all yeah. you know is I'm sick. And, I, and so, and that, that, that authenticity came out in the writing. Yeah. Sure. And, so and it was always about the dream. Yeah. Always about the dream. And people were signing papers, man. Folks were signing the way he writes. I mean, there was a guy. His name was. Uh, mm. But he wrote songs and gave them away. $50 for a song. You know, I mean, it was said that and I can't document this, mm -hmm. but uh, some of the songs the Platters sang. You know, was that wow? You know that uh, some of those were. I bought it for fifty bucks. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Wow. You know, and it's just because so many of the young people wanted to be recognized, man. Just mm -hmm. somebody just paid them a little bit of attention. Sure. Listen to their music. You know, gotta yep. be listening to your music and copying it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Taking it yep. down. You know. Taking so, it uh, down. Hmm. So that that's some very wise stuff. And at those days, that's one of the reasons that first book we wrote was called How to Make Money in Music. Yes, yes. And that book is still around. On, you go on Amazon, it's still there. Herbie Harris, that was my music name, H-E-R-B-Y. Right. And we saw so many folks in the broke. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite songs, man, was um, Ebb Tide. What is it? Ebb Tide. Ebb Tide. A guy named Roy Hamilton, I think. Okay. And this is when the sea rushes in, yeah. lands a kiss on the shore, then rolls out to sea. 
And the sea is very still once more. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Died broke. <laughs> okay. And I mean, he was, he was big, man. He he took some of those old, you know, standards. Mm -hmm. Gave him a whole new life. I know the publishing mm -hmm. companies loved him. Wow. <laughs> but he ended up dying broke. So that that initial intuition and for anybody listening and hearing this young people yes. older people but anybody who's into the music industry into mm -hmm. the artistic industry of any variety anything yeah. anything trust your instincts and get help like you say get mm -hmm. some, don't be afraid to get a second opinion That's if, right. if somebody wants to sign you they're gonna want to sign you tomorrow after you had somebody look it over if right. they don't then chances are they were going to rip you off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, know you about you. Yeah. Now, another question. Think about this now. You're 50 years old now. Yep. Okay. When you are 85 or 90, mm -hmm. what advice would you give yourself today? What advice would I give myself today? Yeah. Invest. 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 Okay. Yeah. Invest. Invest in yourself. Invest in assets. Mm. Invest. Invest in assets, and um, be mindful. Don't be frugal, but don't be careless. Okay. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's that's where I'm at now. I'm, I'm really focused on um, stability and what I'm. What and so I don't end up like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to correct all of this, 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 this is this whole, ever since the aneurysm, I, I, I'm telling you right now, I don't know when the last time I made music mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing business every day, trying to correct all these, all this. So when it comes to 2023, I want to start flowing by, by February, you know, mm -hmm. I'll start a whole new, whole new flow. Mm-hmm. By okay. February, I, I have, I've been working on it for like the last three years, two yeah. years, two, three years, yeah. Correcting everything. Correcting everything. Mm -hmm. That seems to be necessary, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get get my albums back from my first label, my um, from Raucous Records. Mm -hmm. I was on I was on Raucous Records with most stuff and Talib Kweli and all them guys, and um, they still have my, you know, my most popular album. But um, I've been talking to them and getting that project back and um, getting stuff back from this publishing company. Everything is at the same time. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what would you say is your most popular, your most well-known uh, musical creation album, whatever? Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, song, uh, album called I Predict a Riot. An album called what? I, I, I Predict a Riot. Okay. Yeah, I predict the riot. It was a uh, 2007 on on Rockets Records. The uh -huh. lead single was a song. The lead single was a song called uh, "Looking Up," featuring Bilal. Uh huh. Yep. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yes, that that was uh that was my I, that that album was special. That uh -huh. that was um that was when I felt everything changing. Uh huh. You know, I was overseas all the time. I was mostly in Germany. Uh huh. Um, I was. And I had, I was supposed to move to Germany. Mm -hmm. I had a house made and everything, everything was all set up and I, I had fear. Mm. I, I didn't move because of fear. Okay. And that kind of messed because uh, my fan base, the booking agency was over there, everything. If I would have moved there, I would have been so huge. much farther. Yeah, I've yeah. Been huge. Yeah. 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 Because I was already over there like every other month. Yeah. Yeah. But well, they liked your music. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And what was the name of it again? Life is a. I predict a riot. I predict a riot. Woo! Yep. My goodness, that's a great yeah. title right there. Yeah, <laughs> man. And it wasn't just about politics neither. It was the it was the it was riots and relationships. Uh -huh. People not people not facing themselves in relationships. Mm. Um, me not facing myself in relationships. Um, then it has stuff. It has stuff to do with uh, you know, political stuff, of course. And then uh, depression. Song called "Looking Up." That song with Bilal. Uh -huh. Song with Jaguar Wright called "I See Y'all." About, mm. about um about recognizing who people were. Yeah. And and that was be you know before your book, but then your book recognized 
it made me realize what level of consciousness I was. I thought I was super conscious, uh -huh. but I wasn't, yeah. <laughs> you know, it yeah. helped me identify who I, I was also. Wow. So, yeah. So, um, so it helped me to identify my mistakes okay. I made in the past after, after evaluating everything. But yeah, man, I predict the ride. It was like, mm. that was like my favorite project to record, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It was, it was fun doing man it was fun doing i'm talking about i'm living over top of a hair salon uh -huh. in, in south philly uh -huh. right in south philly and over top of a hair salon and the next door to a burnt down building mm. uh, and uh jaguar right recording in my my closet in uh -huh. the hallway and uh -huh. then bahamadi and everybody percussion players coming over with bongos and in the living room he just mic in the whole living room with you know with mics uh -huh. I recorded the whole album on my in my uh my small apartment, my one bedroom apartment. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And it was and I had a budget. I had a, the label gave me a budget and I would have string sections come through and uh -huh. it was just a great year. Wow. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. I tell you, when the label supports you, it's a good thing because it gives you it lets you focus on on the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And live and, your life. <laughs> yeah, and live your life. And then you just want to make sure there's a, a righteous label so they're not, you know, they can be giving you a thousand dollars and making a million. It sounds like right. a good deal, but it ain't fair. <laughs> that ain't fair. Man. Yeah. It ain't yeah. fair. They, they, will make, they will always make their money. Yeah. But in, in and now, like, like then, like I would tell myself, I wish I'd invested. I wish I'd bought property instead. Yeah. I, I don't know what I spent my money on. <laughs> besides besides yeah. uh paying musicians and stuff uh -huh. but, yeah. but that's but you know what that's the nature of money if you don't mm -hmm. know how it comes and goes you'll forget you know yep. yeah, yes, i guess if you don't know how it comes and goes it will definitely go out the door mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah you don't respect it yeah it's yeah. like a, it's like yeah. a, it's like a lady yeah. it's like a lady if you don't respect it it'll yeah. leave you. Well, that's what Reverend Ike used to say. He said, uh, money is like a woman. He said, you can't talk bad about her because if you do, she'll leave you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, all those people who talk about, oh, money is the root of all evil. They're going to be broke forever. <laughs> right, exactly. Because <laughs> they're scared of money. Don't be scared of money, man, because all you do, when you're scared of money, you make money scared of you. <laughs> right. Scared money. And scared money don't make money. That's it. Wow. Jeez. Well, Hezekiah, this has been an incredible interview, man. I've enjoyed you, man. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I've enjoyed myself, man. Yeah. And I, I I just hope we like, you know, like stay in touch and Oh no, we're gonna do some stuff. You know, I, I tell you, the musician in me is coming out, brother. I'm I'm okay. singing now and I see myself getting a Grammy. You know? Okay. Let's let's yeah. let's manifest it. Let's go. Let's That's go. It. I see it. I I I've already got my, I'm prepared to take my daughter and uh -huh. I want to get just to show her it's possible. You know, you gotta, you gotta dream big enough that it makes you scared. You know, so, That's hey, right. This, this dream is so scared, so big, I'm scared, but yet not so big that you are frightened into inaction. Right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. You, Cause my last album was my last album with, uh, the forgiveness song is called yes. the universe does not reward fear. Uh -uh. No, the universe uh -uh. is not reward no. fear. It, it it gives you the fruit to the fear. Woo. That's yeah. right. Yes, it does. And your job any, is to walk through it. Any last words you would like to share with our listeners, man, especially creative people like yourself? Get the book. If you haven't got the book yet, get this book. Um, it'll help your creative process. It'll help your creative process and relationships because create because relationships take takes creativity also. You know, you have to keep everything fresh. Mm -hmm. You have to keep everything thoughtful. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's the same with music. It's the same with any kind of creation, any business. This 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 book is a business book. It's a, it's a relationship book. It's a creative book. Mm -hmm. um, I would tell him to get the book. Okay. And, oh, Dr. Harris. Yes. I got my next album. It's called Colors. My next okay. project is called Colors. Okay. Um, I wish I had a, I don't know that. It's an art project. Okay. So four colors, four albums. 
Okay. Right. Your book is yellow. Mm, yes. It's, it's, it's going to be an education course. So yellow will have his own book, right? Yes. yes. What can you, so your, since your book is yellow, can you tell me what, uh, what about yellow? What is, what is yellow to you? Well, yellow is sun. Yellow is life. Yellow is breath. Yellow is energy. You look at how the sun glows. It's a yellow. It's a vibration of love, but also a vibration of joy. You think about it. All the yellow flowers are beautiful. You ever go in a sunflower? Uh, I was amazed. I was in the garden, and the sunflowers were taller than I was. Mm -hmm. And the yellow just stood out. Butterflies, so many butterflies are yellow. Right. But yellow is a spiritual vibration of peace, of clarity, and of love. There it is. Mm. Hello. <laughs> All right. All right. Now. All right yeah, man. Man. Well, I'm lo I'm loving, I'm gonna be a part of that, man. I, I appreciate what you're doing. And I can hear just in your rap and your rhyme. Yes. And your ability to put the words together. And it's not just words, it's thoughts. Yes. It's images. Yes. And so this train is long overdue, but you're there in the station, not waiting. Let's go. But anticipating. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, man. Open the gates. I'm ready. All right, my friend. <laughs> well, I tell you, Hezekiah. I'm telling you something, my friend. I have enjoyed this. And for those of you who are listening today and will listen in the future, there's yeah, so much meat in this interview because you're hearing from a person who has walked the walk, walked the talk, and mm -hmm. done it. Yeah, man. How many people can say, I had a, a brain aneurysm and it was a good thing? It gave a, good you a whole nother level of vibration. That's right. That's how right. Many, how many people can be as creative as you and have done so many great things and yet, you know, had let fear stop you from moving on to that higher level? You know? Yeah. But now you're free. Now I'm free. I don't have any fear. All right, man. I have no fear, man. It's it's <laughs> something. It's 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 um it's free. Uh huh. It's freedom. But you know, I don't have fear. I don't have fear of losing things, like letting, like I don't have fear of letting go. Uh huh. You know, I it's just freedom. Well, you know, you you remind me a lot of of Nipsey Hussle. Hmm. I mean, the just your your mannerisms and huh. really some of your convictions and some of your thoughts, man. I'm really okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Yeah, I love Nipsey. Yeah. Did you ever get a chance to interact with him? Not, not at all. Not at all. I just uh, watched his interview. I watched his interview. I love his interview. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. All right, Thank my you. friend. All right. Well, those of you who have been with us tonight, just take everything that we've we've given and we've shared with you and take it in like this incredible elixir. Mm -hmm. Let it come into your spirit and brighten up your soul so that you can radiate the person you really are and the person you were created to be. Once again, Dr. Herbert Harris saying another edition of Success Talk is in the books. You can be wow. what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have anything you desire, right. always knowing that the best is yet to come. That's right. So it is. Amen. Yeah,